You're listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. Now listening to Sports Combs, Pelican Post Game PRO Media Network. I'm your host, Big Q. We'd like to thank y'all for joining us on a very interesting show. This is podcast 134. That's right, 134. And we'll be recapping the New Orleans Pelicans matchups against the New York Knicks and the Portland Trail Blazers. And we'll also give you stats, facts, and breakdown on those games. Among interviews from Al Gentry, Andy Davis, DeMarcus Cubs, and even Drew Holiday. So once again, we'd like to thank you. Give you a round of applause for joining us today on the Pelican Post Game Report. Like I said, it's an interesting uh, time to be a Pelicans fan. Of course, now that the New Orleans Saints have been eliminated from the playoffs, all eyes turn toward our beloved New Orleans Pelicans now. And excuse me, this is podcast 135, 135. I apologize for that. On this January the 16th, 2018. That's right, 2018. Podcast 135. We'll recap the Knicks and Trail Blazers games uh, with the Pelicans against the Pelicans. We also have some stats, facts, breakdown interviews. And we also in a second segment, we'll give you some information, transaction news, injury reports, and a preview of the Boston matchups matchup against the new Orleans Pelicans set for tonight at six o'clock. That'll be covered by an NBA TV and that'll be out in Boston. So that'd be a big matchup for that said new Orleans Pelicans. Now, let's talk about uh, the Pelicans game. We'll start with the Trailblazer matchup, of course, with New Orleans being that it was the first contest before the Knicks contest when the Pelicans won the game 119 to 113 in the contest against the Trailblazers, Damian Lillard and C.J. McCullough. Big matchup indeed. New Orleans scored 62 of their points in the paint. Dallas uh, Darius Miller finished the game 16 points off the bench for the Pelicans. That's the highest point total since his career high 21 points last November versus Atlanta. Also, after falling behind 19 to 11 in the first quarter, New Orleans closed the time frame on a 20 to 6 run to take a six point advantage into the second quarter, trailing 47 to 31. Their lar- largest deficit of the game with six minutes remaining in the first half. Portland went on a 30 to 14 run to close the second quarter. To tie the game at the break, Lillard scored 13 of his points in that time frame. New Orleans fell behind by eight points, 75-67, with eight minutes remaining in the third, but answered with a 21-13 run to take an 88-82 lead with just under a minute remaining in the time period. Clinging to a 100-99 lead with five minutes and 25 seconds remaining in regulation, the Pelicans then went on a 13-6 run to push their lead to eight points with just over a minute remaining. Portland would not get any closer for the remainder of the game as Anthony Davis scored 16 of his points in the final time frame, connecting seven of eight uh, from the field in that quarter, ultimately leading to a Pelican 119 to 113 win as AD finished with 36 points as the highest score for the Pelicans. Big win for the Pels against a tough Portland team. And let's listen to what Coach L. Gentry had to say about the win over the Trailblazers. Good the midway points. What boxes were checked tonight in the win? Oh, I just thought we did a good job all, you know, really all around. Uh, you know, you have to be able to guard their uh, perimeter players, and then they played three of them tonight, and I thought we did a good job on it, you know. I mean, that being said, I mean, obviously those guys end up with, uh, you know, uh, 23 each, but they shoot 18 for 43. So, uh, you know, anytime you can do that, I think uh, you've done a good job with them uh, defensively. 
And then uh, we we weren't rebounding the ball there for a stretch and gave up too many uh, second chance opportunities. But I think overall our defense was pretty solid. And then we did a really really good job of just moving the basketball. And uh, I thought this was one of Demarcus's better games that he's played for us, just all around. I thought defensively and the way he did it. And then obviously AD stepped up huge and you know typical AD game really. Coach, what was the difference between the hot stretch that Portland had at the end of the first half and then the way that you guys played in the second half? Well, I thought we were a little loose with the ball when they started to make that uh, run when we were up 16 and uh, just a little careless. And we had a couple of uh, uh, tough possessions and they were able to come back. And, you know, in this league, 16 is not a whole lot. Uh, and so a couple of turnovers here, a couple of bad possessions. And, you know, before you know it, it's a five point game. Does it mean anything that this is against the team you're competing against in the West? To be able to, I know there's a lot of season to go because it really show that you know. You guys no, are I, I just players. think I, I don't think it. I don't think it really matters who we're playing against because, uh, I mean, we're really there's six teams, you know, that's all jumbled up in there, and uh, so it, it, it's not going to matter who you're playing against. You're just going to have to be solid. And as I said, we got to get uh, better than a 500 record at home. You know, you gotta you gotta win. You know, most of your home games, and uh, we put ourselves behind the eight ball there. We still have an opportunity to to do that, but we're gonna have to run some wins off at home and then stay solid on the road. What decision you go with Ian in the fourth quarter? Where did you? Uh, I just thought he had energy. You know, I thought he was playing with a lot of energy, and I thought uh, his cutting and the, and and his and his uh, just play uh, coming off the dribble handoffs really hard was opening up some things for us. Not necessarily for him, but. You know, for other people, and so uh, just instinctively, I went with him. How good was AD in that second half? How much life does it kind of give the team when he's playing? Well, I mean, yeah. we just we, we just have to have him out there. I mean, he just you know our guys are a lot more confident with him out there, and you know, obviously with him, the way he plays and the, what he can do and the way he produces, uh, he's a really tough matchup. When they try to play small, uh, we're able to guard their smalls with AD, but. You know, they have a tough time guarding him, and I thought we did a really good job of getting him the ball in good situations. Yeah, I mean, it kind of seems obvious, but you said Boogie had one of his best games tonight. Do you think uh, having AD kind of allows him to play that way? When oh, no, no, no question about it. You know, there's no doubt about it. When we have both those guys out there, uh, you know, like I said, we're not, you know, the traditional NBA where the NBA is going, where we're playing stretch forwards or whatever. But we have the ability to, 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 for both of those guys to play like a stretch four. But we can still play inside. And I think that's where, you know, those two guys, when they're out there together, that's what makes them so effective, really. Even with the points that Anthony got, his activity on getting on the offensive glass and just being, it seemed like he was everywhere down that stretch. What was that change like for the, for the temperament of the team? No, it, 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 the temperament, it, it, it raises everything, really. When he plays with that kind of energy, uh, you know, and then defensively, I thought he and DeMarcus did great jobs of being able to switch out on the guards and still contain them and had a couple of block shots on the layups. But when AD plays with that kind of energy and everything, I think it energizes the whole team. How important was it for Drew in that first half to kind of carry the offense when the other guys weren't scoring? Yeah, and Drew's done that for us. Um, you know, uh, I mean, obviously being the kind of the, you know, so-called third guy in there, uh, he's been able to lift this game and do some things and score when we really needed it. I thought we did a really good job. Like I said, the two guards shot, you know, 18 for 43 or something like that. I think 18 for 43. Uh, you know, that, that's Coach L. Gentry breaking down the Portland win. Now, of course, looking at the Portland matchup here, New Orleans was able to get the win 119 to 113. Anthony Davis finished the game as the score, the top score of the game, 36 points in 41 minutes, 36 points, nine rebounds for Anthony Davis, drew 41 minutes, shot 16 to 23 from the field, finished huge. Drew Holiday, big shout out to him. He had a really good game, 25 points in 37 minutes. He finished with six assists and five rebounds on the game, very solid game for Drew Holiday, then DeMarcus Cousins. 24 points, 19 rebounds, 8 assists, almost a triple-double day for Big Cuz. 36 minutes, 9 of 21, 3 of 7 from downtown. And then Darius Miller off the bench in 26 minutes of action. Darius Miller's had 16 points, 4 of 6, shooting 2 of 4 from downtown to assist in the game for the 
Pelicans 119-113 on the other side. The top scores for the Portland Trailblazers in a losing effort were both the excellent backcourt of Lillard and McCullum. Both had 23 points apiece in the matchup as the Pelicans were able to ultimately take the win. Looking at the statistics on the night, and then we'll play DeMarcus Cousins, get, uh, excuse me, then we'll play Anthony Davis and get his take on the game as well because we think that a lot of stuff that occurred with the Pelicans coming into this matchup against the uh, Trailblazers with the fact that the Pelicans were shooting so well. They finished this game uh, shooting about 55% on the night, and you're not going to beat the Pelicans too much unless they just go bonkers on the defensive end and allow all kind of easy layups and, al- and turn the ball over very easily uh, and mishandle the ball, disrespect the ball, as I call it. When you turn it over, you're basically disrespecting it. Uh, but they did pretty good in this game. 55% from the field. They were about 37% from downtown. They did have 18 turnovers in which the Trailblazers were able to get 28 points off of the 18 turnovers. But the Pelicans did force 11 turnovers from Portland and scored 18 off it for a 10% dif- uh, 10 point difference differential. Anyway, the Pelicans were able to dominate, not dominate, but they were able to beat them and beat the Trailblazers in the paint 62 to 54 on the night. They also outright rebounded them by one point. But one of the critical things about this night was that referees called the Pelicans to go to the line. They had 23 attempts from the free throw line. They converted 22 of those 23 attempts for a 96 percent grade. Now, that's pretty good. That's really good. And I've often said if you listen to the Pelican post game report, this is not the first one. We've done them all season long. When we spoke about and broke the team down and spoke about how these games, some of these tough games, uh, when they have these difficult shooting episodes, like when they play a team like Dallas or when they played New York uh, last year with that loss at home was the fact that lose, missing free throws, leaving points out there on the court comes back to bite you, especially when you're struggling. When you can get, when you're fortunate enough to get to the free throw line, convert a high percentage of those of those attempts. When you do that, that makes the game a lot easier, especially when it comes down to crunch time, because those points do add up by leaving points out there on the court from not hitting free throws. That ultimately affects you because this team has the propensity to turn the ball over at a ridiculous clip. But tonight, they excuse me, against the Portland game, they only had 18 on the 18, right? That's ridiculous. But still in all, they were able to do just enough to win the game by six. Here's Anthony Davis. Uh, actually, who do we have here? We have DeMarcus Cousins, who's going to chime in on the Portland one. Here's Big Cuz. Um, yeah, and um, I still think we made a lot of mistakes, and, it was, and I still don't think we're back to that level as a de- defensive team that we were earlier on in the year. But uh, – you know, a win is a win. It's tough to win in this league. But uh, with that being said, I think still a lot of things we got to improve on. Do you think uh, tonight was just another example of how, uh, how much easy time changes the team when you play on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we're missing any of our key guys, I mean, we're not the team we can be. Uh, and his presence tonight, I mean, it was, it was felt throughout the whole entire game. So, um, I mean, this place, it basically spoke for itself. It seems like when you play Portland, your eyes kind of light up and getting to the basket and attacking the rim and getting, uh, especially with Nurkic. <laughs> is there something just personal or is it just the matchup favors you that well? Why would anything be personal? <coughs> well, we can use in your ear if you don't get along. I don't hear anything you say. How is that left on your Better game. Do anything differently. You're just feeling well. Was I feeling well? Was I sick the other game? Feeling it. Feeling it? Yeah. What? Shooting, defense. I didn't shoot that well. Uh, just playing the flow of the game. Um, try to get people involved. Got a victory. How much did the game kind of change for you? Oh, I just throw the ball. Get out the way. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, that's how I finish it. That's how I score. So, uh, kind of takes the load off everybody on the floor. Uh, easy target. Did that allow you, Robbie, you had to him a spontaneous thing or something that you've been working on and just kind of you had a sense it was coming as you guys went down the floor? You know what I'm talking about? 
started to drive at the top of the key, then went up right hand to drive and put it to the I've gone those and yeah. kind of a feel. Good to see the end. Get a chance to pull full close out of win. What kind of progression, how nice to have extra guys coming in here. It was incredible tonight. He came in with a lot of energy, uh, defending, going after loose ball, you know, attacking the rim. Um, you know, he, he was great for us tonight. This is important. I can't just talk about the importance of doing those little things, of getting after loose ball, putting your hands down. And to, you know. Mr. Marcus Cousins, man, breaking down his thoughts on the Portland Trailblazer game. When we come back on the other side of the break, we're going to hit you with the New York game. We're going to recap that, then give you some Pelican news. Notes on uh, at newest acquisition Mike James. Also, injury report news. Then we'll preview the Boston matchup. All on the other side to break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Review. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G-Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash view. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. This is podcast 135, and we're covering the Pelicans matchups, recapping them actually against the Portland Trail Blazers and the New York Knickerbockers. This is the segment we'll get into the Knicks. And then, prob- and then after we finish with that, we'll give you some acquisition news, injury news, and then we'll preview the Boston Celtics matchup tonight at 6 o'clock on NBA TV. A big one there. So let's get into it. Uh, the New York uh, Knicks faced off against the Pelicans at Madison Square Garden. Huge, huge matchup for the Pelicans as is a rubber game as they are attempting to get revenge upon said New York Knicks for a home loss they incurred last year late in the season uh, against that same New York team as the unicorn went off on them. But this time around, it was Anthony Davis. It was Anthony Davis' turn to go off, and boy, did he go off for 48 points and 17 rebounds in the matchup at Madison Square Garden, putting his best one of his best performances out against this team as they finished the two-game series tied at one apiece. The Pelicans did an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, win there. Uh, finishing field goal wise, forty seven percent 
uh, same as the New York Knicks. They shot uh, 28% from downtown and had 19 turnovers. The Knicks had more than them with 24. But what really bust the game over was obviously Anthony Davis because this team trailed as much as 19. And we'll get into specifics about it in just a second. Let's hear what Anthony, uh, excuse me, what L Gentry has to say about the Pelicans' big win over the New York Knicks in overtime. Well, you know, I just I didn't think we started the game with a lot of energy, and uh, they did. They did a great job of uh, uh, of getting out. And then I, I thought our transition defense was atrocious. You know, they had uh, I think 17 transition points in the first half. You know, uh, and then I thought we began to, to play some, and uh, then locked in defensively more so than anything. You know, we were a little bit too loose. We ran into the ball. Uh, and then I think all of that changed in uh, about really the middle of the third quarter uh, and then the fourth quarter in overtime. I thought we were really good defensively. One of those where, you know, Anthony just kind of moved you back in some ways where really no one else had him going for a lot of that game. I didn't really know it. I mean, someone said earlier that he plays well here. And I, <laughs> I'd have to say I hope that, that, that continues. I, I thought he was, you know, phenomenal. He just did a great job. A good job defensively too, you know. Uh, I think Porzingis got a got open for a few three pointers, but for the most part, I thought we did a good job on him. You know, uh, he, he's a he's a he's a great player, you know, and he's going to get his points. But I thought uh, from really from the third quarter on, I thought we really made him work hard. He had one open three there, to, a big three pointer. But other than that, I thought we did a pretty good job on him. And then I thought Drew locked in on uh, Jaron Jack. Jaron was really hurting us. Uh, early in the game, and then I thought Drew did a good job of, of getting into the ball and having him feel it a little more than he did. And, and uh, you know, because of that, I, you know, I thought he, he wasn't as effective as he was the first half. How about Juan Morris play at the end of regulation, Coach? Uh, did you uh, stop for a moment there? Yeah, but uh, I'm glad it didn't go in because it wouldn't have counted anyway. So <laughs> I'm glad that it just it didn't go in the basket. I would have gone crazy. So, uh <laughs> You know, we end up winning it in overtime. I thought we did a great job in the overtime. Uh, AD was just huge for us. And, uh, you know, when he get into those zones like that, he's really good. You mentioned Drew's defense. It seemed like in overtime he also came up with some really big uh, scores, three-point play, three-point shot. Uh, we did. And, uh, you know, we were switching on Porzingis at the start. And then AD just really showed and got back and did a really good job. And even the open three that he had in the overtime, he challenged it so hard, and he was so high. I think he had to adjust his shot a little bit, so uh, that helped also. Could they earn a day off tomorrow to rest? Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> you know, we'll see. It's Al Gentry, coach of the Pelicans, uh, chiming in. He can see he's in good spirits after the Pelicans sealed their second straight win by knocking off the Knicks in Madison Square Garden and finalizing a series that won a piece only two games on a season those teams faced off, then they split on them. Uh, each uh, win in, in the other guy's building. New Orleans, there's a little no, news nuggets on the uh, on the Knicks game. New Orleans trailed by as many as 19 in this game. They really did. They fought their butts back in this game. I thought this game was over with the way they played uh, so lackadaisical uh, through the game. But Anthony Davis was the was the glue in this game that kept things really interesting. Uh, New Orleans was just uh, 21%, 5 of 23 from the field, and uh, 2 of 14 from the three-point line in the first quarter. New Orleans did not hold their first lead of the game until about three minutes and 43 seconds of overtime. Anthony Davis scored 29 of his points in the second half. Holiday scored nine of his 31 in overtime. New York committed 24 turnovers that led to 15 Pelican points. New Orleans indeed turned turned over the ball 19 times, resulting in 22 points for the Knicks. DeMarcus Cousins recorded six of his career-high seven steals in the first half. The Pelicans were able to close out this game, due in part because Anthony Davis is 48-17. and Behind him was Drew Holiday, who had a really good game, too. He scored 31 points, had five rebounds and four assists on the night in 45 minutes of play. Of course, Anthony Davis played 50 minutes in this game. He was just, just ridiculous. Etwine Moore finished with 16 points on a 6 of 14 night. He was 4 of 7 from downtown in 45 minutes. And then, of course, is DeMarcus Cousins, who played. Uh, he had foul trouble most of the game, but he was effective at, at rebounding. He had finished with 15 points, 16 rebounds, 7 steals on a night for him. And, of course, no considerable uh, guys off the pitch. As far as the Knicks, the top scorers for the Knicks 
Of course, with Parzinkas and Tim Hardaway, they both had 25 points apiece on the night to no avail as the Pelicans were able to get the best of the Knicks, 123 to 118. Big night for those Pelicans. Here's Anthony Davis to give you his thoughts on what he thought happened. All right, just keep fighting. Um, you know, we just want to get stopped and start to get some easy buckets. Uh, we never have a <clears throat> mentality where, man, we're losing. You know, we always, you know, we just not winning right now. You know, and so um, that's, how we just, that's all we try to do. And you know, we're able to make some shots, get some stops, um, and cut it going into the fourth quarter and then um, just keep playing. How big was it for you guys in this team to be able to overcome what you did? 19-point lead and be able to come back and win overtime. Yeah, um, resilience, you know, toughness, uh, mental toughness. Um, you know, we just wanted to come out and get this win. Uh, we felt like we owed these guys. Um, and they came in, in our home and, and beat us uh, on a game that we felt like we should have won. Um, and so we just didn't want to drop this one, especially to start, start this road trip. That's been tough around the road. Crowd like this going crazy. And the kind of helps you Yeah. Um, you know, you know, um, I think we're <clears throat> we're a good team. Um, it's always tough to play in the garden, you know. Um, but the crowd was, was definitely in effect tonight, and guys, you know, just came up and made big plays on both ends of the floor. And uh, when we do that, we're a tough team to beat. And we try not to focus on the crowd, but uh, it was a great crowd tonight. Um, you know, I'm just happy that we got this. Anthony Davis, we was happy we got the win. A uh, big win for indeed for Anthony Davis and fam as they were able to get things together and win the game. Now, this game was a major one because uh, the Pelicans were able to then move themselves into a considerable position in terms of winning two games in a row, building up some momentum as they go into a matchup against the Boston Celtics that's coming up tonight at the uh, in Boston's in Boston's uh, in their building. Big game against the Celtics, major game against the Celtics in terms of. Uh, the, the Pelicans trying to build some sort of consistency. Of course, the Boston Celtics are a difficult club, no matter how you look at it. They're a team at this current juncture of time with 34 wins and only 10 losses, and they're 18 and 5 in their own building. So, uh, it's TD Garden is the building, and it's it's it's, it's they're just they're just an excellent team. And currently, as it currently stands, they're on a seven game winning streak eight and two of the last 10 contacts, but we'll preview that game in just a second as the, we'll give you some news and notes on the Saint, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the Pelicans transaction news Pelicans did sign Mike James. And this happened a few ga- days ago where they announced to the, the signing of Mike James to a 10 way, two way contract per team policy terms weren't disclosed. James, of course, is a point guard, 6'1", 189, most recently played with the Suns. He appeared in 32 games with 10 starts, averaging 10.4 points, three rebounds, and four assists in 21 minutes a game. He became the first player in NBA history to sign a two-way contract before having his deal converted to a one-year NBA contract on December the 2nd. And then a couple of weeks later, he was waived by December uh, by December the 23rd by Phoenix. A little backdrop on uh, Mike James is he's an undrafted point guard out of Lamar University back in 2012. He spent five years of his career playing overseas in Croatia, Israel, Italy, Greece, and Spain. James will wear number five for the Pelicans and will be available for the contest against the Knicks. Of course, he didn't play in that contest. He might get an opportunity to play. Uh, tonight against Boston as the New Orleans roster currently stands at 18. Of course, Mike James, one of those spectacular stories that we like to hear. Undrafted guy that was pretty decent in college, pretty good in college, came out, didn't get the opportunity. Some other guys got overlooked, uh, ultimately had to go overseas to develop himself playing professionally. And he made his way back into the NBA uh, playing in the D leagues and stuff like that. And ultimately we got a look at by a professional team. Now, uh, that story is kind of similar to my nephew, Lewis Dabney, who was a four-year a player, three-year, a four-year player, top recruit for the Tulane Green Wave, uh, Lewis Dabney Jr. He was one of those guys, man, uh, that was able to uh, go. He's currently playing overseas as well. And his story kind of reminds me of Mike James' story as he played for in South America. He's now playing in Europe. And hopefully he could be able to lead a similar uh, uh, a similar road as Mike James 
in a contest. Now, you know, just a big sh- a little shout out to my nephew, Louis Dabney. Big shout out to you, homie. Uh, looking at Mike James, now a little backdrop before we get into the injury report. I think Mike James will bring something that this team doesn't have. No disrespect to Jameer Nelson, who's kind of up there. You know, he's a, not as quick as he used to be, but Mike James is every bit the penetrating point guard that we've been lacking for a while. He's everything that Tim Frazier wasn't. He's a guy that uh, who is not afraid to go into the basket to attack bigs in the paint to get layups. He shoots a pretty decent percentage from the three-point line. And he's an energy guy. We and this, the, the last two signings that Dell Demps and the administration have done on the two, two-way deals as far as du- Dwayne, uh, uh, well, with DeAndre Liggins, who's a big guy that can guard the twos, and can guard the threes, and then Mike James, a penetrating point guard that can actually set up the bigs a little bit better. I don't know what this means in terms of he'll stick or stay. It's just a two a ten a, a two way contract, uh, so I don't know. But he does provide something no other Pelican point guard provides that speed to get to. Uh, the paint and uh, of course we hadn't seen Frank Jackson yet the young up and coming point guard that they just signed because he had those injuries but uh, who knows we'll hope Mike James could be able to make uh, they'll give him some opportunities to play because he's an exciting guy that will galvanize this team trust me I've seen him play for Phoenix and he's pretty good going to the injury report for the New Orleans Pelicans before we go to the preview for the Boston matchup with a few minutes left we're looking at the uh, Jamil Nelson, who was out Tuesday. He last to uh, yesterday with personal reasons. Uh, there's no indication that he'll be back today. Tony Affle- uh, Allen, who's our other two guard, who sometimes played the tree, is still suffering a setback. He's out for two to four weeks. Frank Jackson is also getting close and close to ramping up his rehab to get back. Solomon Hill speculation and words on the street is that Solomon Hill is ahead of schedule, and we could possibly see Solomon. Uh, toward possibly before All-Star break or right after All-Star break as opposed to what the initial diagnosis was he was done for the season and that if they were going to get him back would be close to the playoffs right before the playoffs doesn't look like look like uh, Solomon Hill is actually might be ramping up to get ready to uh, make a a, a, uh, an appearance around that time period so that's exciting to be able to get a defensive stopper back and of course Alexis Janka is uh, still out with that for four to six month diagnosis on that that knee uh, situation. So, hey, that's the injury report for the Pelicans. Going into the preview against the Boston game and some news and nuggets on the Boston game, it's very interesting, this whole contest with Boston because New Orleans has won just one of the last six meetings with Boston and two games against the Celtics last season. Andy Davis averaged 30 points, 16 rebounds, two steals, and two blocks. I hope he does that in a winning effort. And one game against Boston last season as a member of the Sacramento Kings, Big Cousins recorded 28 points, nine rebounds, three assists, and four blocks in two playoff games against Boston last season in the Minnesota. Uh, as a member of the Chicago Bulls, Ray John Rondo averaged 11 uh, and a half points a game, 10 assists, eight and a half rebounds, three steals. Wow, that'll be a nice if, if he could provide that kind of push for tonight. In two games against the New Orleans, uh, two games against New Orleans last season, Marcus Smart averaged 18 points a game while shooting 59% from the field and 61% from the three point line. Got to stop that guy if that's the case. In one game, L. Alford averaged eight points, eight points, eight rebounds, and two blocks. In one game against New Orleans last season, as a member of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Kyrie Irving recorded 49 points on 50. 53% shooting, including 57% from deep, two rebounds, four assists, two steals, and one block. L Gentry is 10 of 14, uh, 41% all time against the Celtics. Brad Stevens is 5 and 3, 62% all time against the New Orleans uh, Pelicans. Now, with all that said, and you look at the all time record as the Pelicans versus the Celtics is not good. All time record is 16 and 162. <laughs> The last 10 games is five and five, to be fair. Okay, the last five, it don't look that well. It's one and four. So, hey, let's hope that things change a bit in this matchup as uh, we're we looking at the the the, the uh, Celtics coming into this matchup and Kyrie Irving and the rest of those guys are going to be uh, hungry to play. The Pelicans average 103 games, uh, points a game. They uh, allow opponents to score 98 a game. Pretty good. Uh, 45% from the field, they shoot, they get 44 and a half rebounds, 22 assists, four, almost five blocks a game, seven and a half steals a game. And they've won seven in a row. They're eight and two, the last 10 games, New Orleans average 11 to 111 points a game while giving up 111 points a game, 49% from the field, 42.5 on the rebounds a game. They 
throw about 26 assists a game, five blocks, seven and a half steals, and they're currently on a two-game winning streak, and they're six and four in the last 10 games. Interesting indeed. Uh, for the Pelicans, looking at some of the things the Pels got to do, and of course, I'll make my predictions right now. Jason Tatum, however, is uh, day-to-day, according to the injury report, day-to-day is Jameer Nelson dealing with personal injuries. We don't know how exact uh, how that'll fare, but hopefully we can get a look at Mike James. That'll be interesting to see Mike James out there uh, for the Pelicans. Trust me, he gives you an element that we don't have here, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you. New Orleans is 22 and 20. Uh, sitting in the center in the third place in the Southwest Division, the Boston Celtics are 34 and 10, seven game winning streak. As I said, they're number one in the Atlantic. They're four games over Toronto, who's pretty damn good, who currently on a losing two game losing streak <clears throat> in the uh, Atlantic the Division. Now, looking at this game, Boston Celtics 34 and 10. They're 18 and five at home. Ah, I, I hate to tell you this, but I mean, looking at what the Celtics they. they, they, they it's hard for me for for me to say, you know, even as a as a Pelican uh, fan, to say that the Pelicans will get the best of this team unless anything can happen in the NBA. NBA. Kyrie Irving averages twenty four points a game. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum basically average fourteen points a game. L. Hofford gives them thirteen a game. Marcus Morris gives them four eleven points a game. So you have. Five guys that's in double figures. Marcus Smart off the bench gives them almost 10 a game. Rosier gives them nine a game. And they're pretty good defensively, too. Really good defensively. And I think that this will be a tough matchup for the Pelicans to overcome against this Boston Celtics team in Boston. In may perhaps in the New Orleans Arena at Smoothie King Center, I would give them more of a chance, but maybe not so because they don't capitalize off a home field advantage uh, at all. It don't matter where they are. When they play, they don't use home field to stack power wins. They go out on the road. They beat a tough. They they beat a thriving uh, Knicks team in the Madison Square Garden. Perhaps they could pull off an upset win over Boston. Anything's possible. But I'm gonna have to go uh, with my Yo, instincts here, here and say to myself, I don't think this is gonna help. And I think Boston is gonna stop the, the Pelicans' two-game winning streak. I'd be very surprised if the Pelicans play disciplined enough to not turn the ball over that much. Keep the turnovers to under ten points. A ten. Uh, turnovers a game played trans- fan- uh, excellent transitional defense where the Boston Celtics throughout I just don't see it happening unless they had some major transformation overnight I have to pick Boston in this matchup so thank you for listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network and also as usual we like to thank all of our people out there our donors the fans everybody and continue to show some love by donation going to the, the www.patreon.com slash the PR media network the PRO media network and donating or simply going to our social media pages on Facebook Twitter Instagram and YouTube and subscribing liking and sharing the show so from Q and the, the Pelican Post Game staff thank you have a nice afternoon peace Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell die bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, 
Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book, providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide, offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. <laughs> 